Hi, everybody. Welcome to this video. This is the video for module 12 of business math and calculators. Uh, this module deals with order of operations. And so we're going to talk about what those steps are and do several example problems to illustrate the application of order of operations when simplifying uh, numerical expressions. Uh, so with that, um, we're going to, I'm going to share my screen and we'll walk through some examples. All right, so let's start talking about some problems with order of operations. Um, remember that in order of operations, there's basically four main steps that we go through. The first step in order of operations is working with the grouping symbols or parentheses is oftentimes how it's stated when we talk about it. There are different types of parentheses. There's kind of the regular, regular parentheses symbols, but there's also like square brackets and squiggly brackets and different ways that you can group things together. So grouping symbols is just the general term that refers to any of those uh, symbols or operations that group things and group operations together to be done first. After you take care of the grouping symbols and get those simplified as much as possible, then you take care of the powers and the roots. So if there's any exponents in your problem or any square roots, for example, um, those are done next, always done from left to right. After exponents is multiplication and division. Again, we take care of those operations from left to right, depending on how many of those operations show up in your problem. And then finally, the only thing that should be left is addition and subtraction. That's done last, again, from left to right. Okay. So let's go through and just do a couple of example problems to illustrate the application of order of operations. So we will jump into our first sample problem. And so we want to simplify the expression 5 to the second power plus 3 times the quantity 8 minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite the expression so we have something to work with and now we just start progressing through the steps in order of operations again first step is grouping symbols so we do have parentheses in this problem so what we do is whatever operation is inside of the parentheses we take care of that first so we're going to do eight minus two in this situation eight minus two gets us six so when we rewrite the expression we now have five to the second plus three and then the parentheses, the six. Remember that, that parentheses also have the meaning of multiplication. So when you get it down to that single number, what this problem is now showing is that the three and the six are gonna be multiplied together. Okay. Now, before we get to multiplication, the next thing to take care of though is exponents. We wanna take care of those powers and any roots that show up. And in this problem, there is a power, five to the second power is five times five or 25. So that's simplified next. Now we go to multiplication and division. Uh, and like we just talked about, there's multiplication in this problem. So we have three times six, which is 18. So we take care of that next. Again, we are technically going left to right, but there's just the one operation that's happening. So that's why we can kind of jump to that piece of the problem. Last step in order of operations is to take care of addition and subtraction. There's only a, an addition step in this problem. So we do that next. Again, technically we go left to right, um, so we end up with an answer of 43. And there we go, that is our final solution. Remember, the goal with order of operations is to make sure that whenever you look at a problem and whenever anybody looks at the same problem, we want people to get to the same numerical result. And so it's important that we follow the steps carefully because it is possible if you do things out of order to get different numbers, and that's what we want to avoid. You wanna make sure that everybody gets to the same final answer when looking at the same problem. Okay. So let's go on to another example. Uh, this time, we've got a problem that involves some division and multiplication and then some more division. So we're gonna start by rewriting the problem. Now, the key thing that I wanna point out on this example is we don't have all of the different operations that are in our list of order of operations. Um, there are no parentheses, there are no exponents, there's no addition and subtraction. So what that basically means is we want to check those steps, but if there's none of that operation, you simply skip over it. So when we start at the top of order of operations, we start with grouping symbols. There are no parentheses in the problem, so we just move on to the next step. Okay, the next step is exponents, powers, and roots. 
there are no powers, there are no roots. So again, we just skip over that step and just keep moving our way down the list. The next thing that we do come to though, is there is multiplication and division. Now here's where I want to point out kind of a pitfall for people is sometimes people assume that multiplication has to be done before division. And that's not always the case. It depends on how they appear in the problem from left to right. If division shows up first, do division first. If multiplication shows up first, do multiplication first. Work your way starting on the left hand side of the problem and go to the right. So in this particular situation, we do have 24 divided by two showing up first. So we're gonna simplify that and then continue working to the right. So 24 divided by two is 12. Now we've got 12 times six divided by two. The timesing, the multiplication is next. So 12 times six is 72. And then we're left with that division. So 72 divided by two is 36. Now we're down to a single number, so that's a good sign that we are finished. But just for good measure, we'll always make sure that we check for addition and subtraction. Again, there isn't any of that operation, so we are done, which means our final answer is 36, and we're good to go. All right, let's do one final example problem. So we're going to simplify this expression. Again, I'm just going to rewrite it here so we have a problem to work with. We're going to start with our grouping symbols. There are parentheses in this problem. So we have three plus two in the parentheses. So we're going to simplify that first, get us down to five. Yeah. Now we're left with multiplication, subtraction, and division. So there are no powers and roots in this situation. We can skip over that step since there's nothing to simplify in that regard. Uh, we take care of multiplication and division next from left to right. So we are going to do the four times five first, which gets us 20. And then we're gonna take care of the 20 divided by five. So we wanna make sure that gets done next. So 20 divided by five is four. And that leaves me then with 20 minus four. So addition and subtraction is done next. There's only the subtraction. So we do that operation. We end up with an answer of 16. And when all said and done, that is our final answer. And we are good to go. All right, so order of operations. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful in illustrating the process that you go through to simplify numerical expressions. Um, if you have any questions, like always, please do not hesitate to reach out and ask. I am always happy to help assist um, if, you, if you need help. Uh, brushing up on your algebra skills, uh, let me know. Um, thanks again for watching the video. If you need anything, let me know. Otherwise, we will catch you in the next video.